Welcome to the Rural Housing Information System. When you navigate to the home page, there's two ways that you can select a municipality. You can type in the name of the municipality, city, or township, and it'll pull up the drop-down menu, and you can select a municipality from there. Or you can hover over the map to select any of the municipalities that are lower tier or the county from the map below. But today we'll have a look at Peterborough. So I'll just click on the county of Peterborough, and that's going to navigate us to their community overview page. When we get to the community overview page, you have the ability also to navigate to the lower tiers of that county if you're looking to hone in on a smaller area. And then it has a number of default statistics, population, average household income, average shelter costs, average rent, uh, the percent of households in unaffordable housing, and the core housing need. If you're unsure of what any of the points mean, you can click on the eye icon to give you the definition, or you can navigate to the definitions page. The site has the ability to be viewed in either French or English, so you can click on the French tab here in the upper top corner, and it'll provide, as you can see, all the menu items in French, as well as all the content for our communities <clears throat> that speak French. So we'll just click back to, for, to English for today. Uh, the community overview page also shows the community's official plan, as well will show their housing and homelessness plan. And then we have a community assets and amenities map below that features schools, parks, arenas, and hospitals. On the site, there are a series of housing um, data pillars, demographics, economics, housing market, housing supply, housing development incentives, zoning, and then the ability to compare our municipalities to one another with a comparison tool. Today, we're going to get a taste of the site. We're going to look at a couple scenarios. Uh, for example, developers wanting to build a multi-residential complex in Prince Edward County, what data would they need? And what does this, how does this relate to what's in the RHAS and what utility does the tool have? We would navigate to the county's page and go to their zoning tab, and it would bring up this interactive um, map of the of the county and as you can see here on the side we have a zoning layer so we can open up the key on that to have a look at what that's showing us so there's a series of color coded um, what zones that permit multi-dwelling construction uh, so some of them are residential some of them are commercial and industrial and you can see as i toggle that on and off it's flashing on and off in the background on the map but we'll zoom in a little bit closer so you can have a better look uh, we'll have a look at picked in here you can see there's all kinds of uh, little colors uh, there that are showing each of the zones so we'll just zoom in a little bit closer so we can have a better look so within the town of Picton, obviously, there's a number of different urban uh, residential zonings, commercial zonings that all permit multi-residential. We also have the ability to turn on the aerial map. And as you can see, that's going to show us where all the, the buildings are. So if we zoom in a little bit closer, uh, you can toggle on and off the zoning layer there so that you can see whether or not there is already an existing building there. It doesn't mean that it isn't uh, in need of repair or not up for sale, but it does give you an idea whether or not it is a vacant lot. But we'll just turn off the aerial view for now because it does make the map a little bit busy. I'm going to zoom out and we're going to look at the entire county. So one thing that a developer might be looking for is whether or not these um, settlement areas are developed. So first of all, where are the settlement areas in Prince Edward County? Where is that built up community already? So as you can see, as I toggle on and off this layer, um, the polygons turn on and off there. That shows where the settlement areas are in Prince Edward County. And then depending on what color they are, that's going to tell you whether or not they have servicing. So if the polygon is red, there would be no servicing. If it's yellow, there would be water only. If it's blue, there would be water and waste. And if it's brown, there would only be waste. So this is certainly a decision, um, helps with your decision when you're doing a project. So reducing costs for building a well or a septic system so that you might choose Picton or Wellington because you would have waste and water services there. But if cost isn't an issue and you're wanting to um, focus on another settlement area that's a priority for you, for example, uh, right outside of Belleville there, those yellow ones just have water. So again, you can toggle that on and off to see what services are provided there. This page will also provide uh, the zoning bylaw for a quick reference of what's permitted to be built in those areas and a summary chart. In another scenario that a nonprofit housing association is working with Lennox and Addington County to submit an affordable housing grant to CMHC. 
what data would they need and how does this relate to what's in the RHIS and what utility does the tool have for them? So we would navigate to the County of Lennox and Addington's uh, overview page, and then we would look down at housing market because what they're looking for is the rentals information. And our housing market page includes the sales and the rentals data. So we'll open up that tab. And as you can see, it brings you some default statistics, the average rent, average dwelling value, and the average monthly shelter costs and a number of data visualizations. But what we're going to focus on today is this average rent piece. So CMHC makes its decisions on what the market rent is uh, in that community as to how much um, capital they would give you for a certain project uh, or housing benefits. So they typically use a formula that they have um, that includes a whole wide range of types of rentals. So it certainly skews and reduces the average market rent. Um, so in this case, in Napanee, CMHC says the average market rent is $980 a month. But as you can see, we've pulled this information from classified ads, and it ranges from about $1,500 to $1,800 is the actual asking rent. So you can take this information within the tool and you can export it into a spreadsheet and you can include that in your proposal to CMHC to request a higher level of benefits or capital based on the actual asking rents for that region, challenging that number that CMHC has on what their um, surveyed amount is for the average rent for that region. So certainly makes a difference in being able to submit your proposals by having all this information in one place. Our final scenario is looking at the Hastings County Council. They're wanting to see what neighboring counties housing issues are and make to make future decisions around housing supply. So what information would they need and how does this relate to what's in the RHIS tool? Let's take a look. So we're going to navigate to County of Hastings uh, to their overview page and we're looking for the housing supply page. So if we click on that tab, this provides all the information about the dwelling stock as well as all the permits information. So you can see that it's showing us all the residential constructions as well as the uh, completed units. So all the data visualizations, you have the ability to interact with them. If you're wanting to look at a specific type, you can toggle on and off the information. You can hover over the bar charts to see how many single detached there were, what percent of the overall dwellings it was. If you're unsure of a point, you can pull up the eye icon there to provide information. And obviously you can download any of the data visualizations as well. But what the council was interested in focusing on is the stock that they have in Hastings. So here it shows the number of dwellings and it shows the, the makeup of that on the bar chart. And so you can hover over each one of those to see how many it is and what percent of the dwelling stock it is. And again, you can interact with the visualization to just hone in on the specific dwelling type that you're interested in, if it's semi-detached or row or apartment. But in this case, Hastings was interested in comparing their dwelling stock to neighboring municipalities. So we're going to look at the comparison tool. So it auto-populates with the municipality that you're on. So we've got Hastings there and some default statistics will pull up the average household income, shelter costs, rent, uh, the portion of households living in unaffordable housing, and the core housing need for that area. So we're going to add a couple locations here. We'll open the location finder, and it'll just take me a few minutes to add a couple of our neighboring upper tier counties. So we'll add Frontenac. We'll add Halliburton. You can also add any of the lower tiers, but it certainly becomes a lot more busy. We'll just add one more. We'll add Kawartha Lakes. And you can add as many of the municipalities that are featured on the site. I can see that's auto-populated, so I'm just going to close out the location finder. You can rearrange the columns as well if you want them organized in a certain way to make it easier to compare for the visualization. And you can track down to cross-compare any of the default statistics. And then you can open up the data finder to find any of the data that is featured on the site to cross compare. But in today's case, we're looking at the housing supply. So we're going to select the housing supply and it's going to pull up all the data points that are featured there. If I wanted to remove any of them, I would just click the X and that would take them out of the chart. And I can see that it's auto populated behind. So I'm going to click out the data selector. And then I can cross compare what's happening in each of those municipalities. How many apartment buildings does one municipality have over the other? How did Kawartha Lakes, for example, have so many apartments? Was it demand? Did they create an incentive or a policy? How did they do that? Is there something that we can learn from what Kawartha Lakes has done to increase that number in Hastings, for example? 
Or are we interested in looking at semi-detached houses? You know, how many do our neighboring municipalities have and what have they done to encourage that growth in that area if Hastings was wanting to see growth there? So interesting cross comparison. You have the ability to export that data. You can print it or share it as well if you're wanting to take that to council for a presentation or in include it in a proposal that you're sharing with staff. And again, you can add any of the data points that are featured on the site. Thank you, that is the RHIS.